Welcome back to Lehigh River Subdivision. Today we're going to take a look at my first custom painted and decaled box car, or any type of rolling stock for that matter. Uh, Cameron and I caught a lot of these RBMN box cars on the North Reading Fast Freight last year, and I've long wanted one for the layout, but they are not made yet in N scale. So we ordered the decals, I painted and decaled it. So let's take a closer look at it. I didn't record any of the work as I need to pay full attention to what I was doing um, as this was my first attempt at ever doing anything like this. So with that being said, we'll talk you through how we got from a roundhouse box car that was painted for rail box to a Reading and Blue Mountain the Northern box car. Hope you enjoy. So what you're looking at is a rail box box car um, scheme from Roundhouse and this is what we started with only mm, the one I used didn't have this door because that would have been prototype to the Reading and Northern so w what I did was I looked at the pictures of boxcars online and I looked for whatever in my collection fit I needed seven ribs on each side of the door so that's where this boxcar came in this one was perfect and this is the one I used. So let's take a look through how we got from that to this. The logo for the Reading and Northern is on a piece of metal that's welded onto the ribs of the box car. So what I went ahead and did was cut out a piece of styrene on each side and super glued it on after I stripped the paint because this was a rail box, um, box car. Stripped the paint the best I could the rest of it just did not want to come off So I think it'll be okay. We'll spray over it and see what happens um, But I just wanted to show what I did. Um, I ended up breaking the footsteps off the bottom during scrubbing so what once it's done, I'll make some out of wire and We will paint them and glue them on But I'm not too concerned about that right now, and then I'll flip it around and you can see the other side has the spot for the logo as well so what we need to look at is um, I want to show you the decals we're going to be working with here these are the CMR products I ordered them and um, they can see the red and black logo there that goes on that flat piece of styrene we cut and then there's the rest of the stuff pretty easy car to do I think in my opinion that's why this is my first attempt. So here's the box car now, uh, painted black. And I went ahead with um, satin finish white paint to paint the white lines that are on the bottom of the car. So I just painted that by hand. It came out okay. If I get it to focus. And then I'll flip it. And there's the other side. So now we're ready for the decals. So that is what I'm going to work on next. Once I decal it, we'll take a look. All right, and here is the car all decaled. But um, there you can see we got the Reading and Northern logo on the piece of styrene we um, super glued on the car. So that is the only thing that goes over here. Now there's um, the three reflectors underneath. There's supposed to be a reflector right in between those two steps, but they only give two big reflectors for that. There's not four. Uh, bad, bad on CMR or whoever makes the decals on that because it doesn't give you enough reflectors. Um, but that was the only downside to the decals, really, in my opinion. Um, looking at this side now, we had to put the R, the B, the M, the N. The 82198 was three different pieces. As you can see, the 8's a little off. But when you step back a bit, it doesn't. It isn't as noticeable. We had to put the plate C decal on. Then we got the load, the load limit, load weight, and the numbers aside of it. And then the two inch comp shoe decal that goes on the white paint there. When we come to the end. You can see up there we got RBM 82198. So this side is the second side I did. 
So let's take a look at the first side. Okay, so coming over here to the first side, you can see where those big reflectors are in that I ta just talked about were missing on the other side. Right there, I got it to focus. So this side um, has everything on it. I am I cut one of those two inch comp shoe decals in half. Uh, that's why the second one isn't on the other side. Um, otherwise, this was the first side and I'm happy with the way it turned out. Everything's pretty lined up good. The only issue I had on this side was with this logo because it curled up. And I'm gonna talk about that after this. So, I am very happy with this car. It turned out good. You come back a bit, it looks awesome. And uh, we'll do a far view on the other side as well. So back to the second side, and I'm just gonna zoom them back out here, pan out, and it looks really good. I am happy with it. It's not 100% perfect, because if you come in and look, because I used spray paint, there's a bit of an orange peely finish to the car, and that's where I need to get an airbrush um, to get the kind of paint finish I'm looking for. I mean, there's a lot of people that would be happy with this, but I did... I do house painting and painting something that I take pretty serious and I just know that an airbrush is going to give me the finish I want to see. So, so overall this was a great learning experience. You're going to need Microsol micro set, uh, a tweezers, a sharp hobby knife is what I used the, with the tweezers to get the decal off the backing. Um, I would suggest getting a uh, spring loaded tweezers I'm gonna look into one myself I didn't have it but it would have made the job a lot easier for holding the decals when you dip them in the water um, do not dip your decals and let them float I had one of the decals come off and it made a big job out of something that shouldn't have been but I was able to salvage it and fix it so those are some of the things I learned and I had a lot of help along the way I'm gonna leave links in the description for the channels that helped me out in doing this project.